Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, this is the weekly update. Uh, I think I'm going to try five uh, stories and then I'll pick one of them and we'll do a deep dive on it. Because not all of these are just like self-explanatory. So first on the news, SystemD is working on 258 and that is nearing release. Should, should be sometime by the end of the year, I think. Uh, before that is ready. The second one is uh, Bcash FS, and this affects me because I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to do some benchmarking again for all the file systems, and this could potentially impact me depending upon when kernel 617 comes out. So what's going on? So Bcash FS has been dropped temporarily from the Linux kernel 617, so it, it will not be compiled in. The third story is LKRG. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's the Linux kernel runtime guard. It went into, it's got some maintenance updates this week and some bug fixes. So it is a, uh, it's a powerful tool for hardened systems. So what that means is it's, it has the capability, of, it runs in the kernel and it is able to detect uh, any kind of intrusion or malware or attempts to modify your system. Now, you might think, wow, that sounds like a good idea. How come that's not in the kernel? Well, there's some reasons behind that. And it has to do with the code that's inside of LKRG. First of all, they, they in order to accomplish what they want to do, they have to use unpublished APIs, which means, yeah, they're at a level of the application programming interfaces that may not be widely supported. So they could change out from underneath the uh, out from underneath the, the package without warning. However, you will find that tool being used by security researchers. The next story is Microsoft is releasing 6502 basic source code. So what? 6502 basic, wait, that's the basic uh, interpreter for the 6502 processor? You mean the one that came out in like 1975 or something? Yeah, that's it. So <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they've decided that, that that source code can go to the open source world now. We had GNOME 48 that was released, I think it was back in March, mid-March sometime. And that was supposed to be able to kind of be the transition point for GNOME. Going forward from that point, GNOME would be Wayland only. But the GNOME folks realized that they had to support legacy in GDM. If you don't know what GDM is, GDM is a login display manager. So in other words, it authenticates you and then it allows you, there's a, usually a menu at the bottom right uh, where you can choose what desktop environments you want to launch. Uh, and so it, it manages that part of it. There's some other things that it does as well. A lot of people think that uh, GDM is some system process. No, it's not. It's just it's just another X or Wayland app. That, that's it. So nothing else about it. It just happens to sit ahead of the launch of the desktop environment. And it also can manage, you know, uh, window managers as well. So what happened was in, in 48, they had plans to do this hybrid thing where the GDM would have some support for X11, just enough to be able to launch a desktop environment that required X. And there's still some around, XFCE, Cinnamon, Mate, Budgie. What happened was they ran out of time. They It got to be a bigger chore than they thought it was going to be. This always happens with legacy code. You start digging into it, and then you find this is wrapped around that, and it calls this, and it calls that, and pretty soon you're trying to bring in the whole stack. So, yeah, they, they just wanted just enough to be able to allow you to be able to launch other things. So what they had was they have a, a compile time variable, uh, that allows you to turn on the X11 pieces in, in total or not. However, some, but they left it up to the distributions to decide what they wanted to do. Now, Fedora, I think, was the one that actually discovered this after they had shipped Fedora 42. So they realized they couldn't get this done in time, so what they decided to do was just compile it with X11 off uh, in order to streamline it down. Well, that created a problem. 
that Fedora found was that all of a sudden they couldn't launch <laughs> Cinnamon, XMCE, Mate, none of those would come up. So they couldn't bring up the X11 environment because the environment variable was turned off. So the, the long and the short of it is when 49 started, they, they realized there was no way they were going to get this work done, even on 49, even though they, they worked on it anyway. They decided to turn the whole thing back on again in order to provide support for these other desktops that still need it. Now, yeah, you can you can always change out your uh, login display manager to you could you could run. In fact, Cinnamon did run, I think, LDDM for a while, but I think once Ubuntu standardized on GDM, I think they kind of fell in line behind that. But I do remember that Cinnamon, I think actually ran LDDM for a while. But you can run, it, 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 it doesn't really matter which one you run as long as it brings up the supporting environment that your desktop environment needs, X11, for example. So, yeah, and, uh, so, and there, there's always the old-fashioned way of launching, it, launching your desktop environment from the desktop. Uh, you don't actually need a display manager. You can log in with the Linux terminal and then, yeah, and then go up that way. That's, in fact, that's the way we used to do it way back in the day. 50, no 50, is going to turn X11 back off again. Kind of, sort of, a little bit, not completely. That's expected to be released March 2026. The plan there is to delete most of the old X11 code in GDM. That their, was their original plan. They want to keep just enough that they can launch a modern X11 session, which will allow, uh, which GNOME doesn't care about because GNOME doesn't, they use Wayland. But if you're running one of these other desktop environments like XFCE or Cinnamon or Mate or Budgie, you'll be able to actually bring those up with no problem without having to incur the penalty of bringing the whole X11 environment up if you're running KDE or you're running GNOME or you're running something that doesn't need, if you're running a window manager that's based on Hyperland, for example, and you don't want the X11 environment up, did GNOME developers, did they screw up? No, I don't think so. I think I, I think that's just, I, I've been there. I know exactly what they've encountered. It, it's a, it's a, it's, you don't really, you don't know what you don't know until you get down in the code and look. Unless you dealt with it, you know, for a length of time and that's that's part of your DNA and you just know it by heart. Uh, and there's very few people like that because the ones, they burn out, they leave and they and somebody else comes in and takes their place. So they may not go into that code unless they need to, right? So they won't know it all that well. Can you armchair a quarterback and say, oh, they screwed up? When you're in the heat of the battle, you've got one of two paths. You can either rip it out or you can leave it in. But they did... They did the right thing. They left a compile time flag in there. But a lot of times, these small ones, these small like XFCE, they don't manage the build for the distros for Fedora or Ubuntu. So it's left up to them to do that and to remember to turn that flag on. And if they don't, well, that's what you get. That's what happens. So <laughs> this kind of reminds me of a story back in the 90s. So it kind of it, it kind of mirrors exactly what we're going through right now, is that back in the 1990s, Bell Labs was working on a replacement for Unix. They Unix wasn't designed with networking or graphical user interfaces. All that was a bolt-on to it, and the developers of Unix, though, they looked at things holistically and they wanted it integrated, but they wanted more than that. Unix also wasn't designed to scale. It wasn't meant to operate in clustered environments. And so they wanted to build a new operating system to be able to handle all of that. And that was Plan 9. Plan 9 was a joke. The name was a joke. It, was, it came from Plan 9 from Outer Space. That was a, a film by Ed Wood, probably one of the worst movies ever made. But it also has a very large cult following. And so the, the Unix guys said, well, it's either, Plan 9 is either going to be great or it's going to be terrible. And so, yeah, that, that's where they kind of left it. Uh, and so they named it Plan 9. 
But there was another inside joke that that uh, that a lot of people don't know about, and that's their graphical user interface or a graphical environment on Plan 9 was actually called Rio. But everyone knew it as 8.5. And, a half. and there, the reason for that is there was two reasons, actually. One is there's a old Blit uh, terminal. Blit was one of the first uh, Bell Labs or AT&T terminals that had a graphical user interface. It actually had its own operating system, too, called MUX. And, but Mux was actually called Seven. At least they had a nickname called Seven, and so they they didn't want they didn't want to just say that Rio was eight because it was better than just a just a, a major release up from Mux. So they said it's eight and a half. And why did they pick eight and a half? Well, that was the other joke, and it was a nod to a Federico Fellini film. That was done in see, 63, I think, 1963. It's called Eight and a Half. Eight and a Half is about a man who's caught between the past and, the, and, the, and his future plans. He's paralyzed. He can't go back and he can't go forward. And that's what the film's about is his struggles between his, his, his legacy of the past and wanting to go into the future. So... That's kind of where Plan 9 was because uh, it was trying to replace uh, X11 with Rio. Uh, and, and so they were, they were kind of caught in that trap. Plus, they had the operating system itself between Unix and Plan 9. So they had kind of a double trap there between, they were caught between the past trying to maintain legacy and moving forward. Well, guess what? That's where we are again today. That's where X11 is, and Wayland is the future. So, yeah, we're caught in between those two things. We can't, it seems like we, we, we definitely can't go back because that door is closed. Uh, in 2012, the XOR team completely stopped development on X11. And ever since 2012, the only work that was done on X11 was just maintenance and security patches. So it's been in that mode for over a decade. And, and so there's very few people working on it. And the move from the maintainers is to forget it, leave it behind, use Wayland. And that's the direction that we're going. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, th there's, there's no way back and there's no way forward because the legacy is X11 and we still need that. Uh, ask NVIDIA if you don't believe me. So, yeah, so I think that's kind of where we're at with things. That's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you again real soon, and bye for now.